let us endow our individual with two properties. The first is rationality and the second is self interest. It is not exactly endowment, it is like if we want to study individual systematically, then we say that the individual is rational. Because let us say if someone is acting irrationally, someone is acting very, very irrationally, then of course, we cannot analyze that situation. For an example, let us say that someone did something and then you may you may contemplating why that person has acted in this particular way. One simple answer could be this is the way he wanted to act. Okay. Everything can be explained on this basis that this is the particular way this person wanted to act and that is why he has acted in this fashion. So, here the explanation this explanation would explain everything in the world. So, in that way this explanation does not give you any more information that you already had. So, for this reason this explanation is useless. So, that is why we want to fix one side of the story that individuals are always acting rationally. Now, it has two side because this rationality can be about process, how a person has reached to this decision or it is about result, acting in a particular way that gives you the maximum, the best possible result. And these two are not the same, these two are different. Sometime a rational process may lead to not the best possible result. So, but still we talk about in economics we emphasize process rather than result. The reason is very simple then because result it is it is very very difficult to internalize that it is very it is almost impossible to internalize how did someone reach to that result one can say okay this is the best result and he should act in a act to get achieve that result but that doesn't say anything about the process the thought process that is going on so here in economics we are going to concentrate on process the next term is self interest what do we mean by self interest so this is the, the most fundamental assumption that we make in economics is that all individuals act in self interested fashion now what do we mean by self interest it's like acting for your own benefit for the self benefit and that is self interest someone may scoff immediately that why you are making self interest as the central assumption of this subject. I, I know many people, you can say I know many people who do not act to fulfill their self interest, they act for the betterment of the society. Okay. But here in economics, the common, the basic assumption is that people humans are self interested. How they have reached to this level, it is not typically it is not discussed. We take a person's preferences, a person tests as given. Okay. So, we do not say why that person has become so self interested, we do not care about it. We take that person's nature as given and then we analyze. But here another way to look at it, this self interest can be broad enough that you may care for just one person or you may care for the society. 
Okay. So, when you care for society, you become altruistic, but this also includes here the narrow definition would say narrow here we can use it to say this is your this is what you want to do, whatever if you want to do well for the society that is what you would like to do. So, here we are completely silent about how you have reached to this assumption but the, we take this assumption as given. So, now we have seen this rationality and self interest. Rationality is about method that your method should be of well thought, it should be well reasoned, it should not be guided by emotions, it should not be guided by your uh, fear, it should be well thought, reasoned that is what we are talking about method. And self interest it gives you an objective, what you do? You do anything to satisfy your need, your wants. Okay. So, it gives you objective and these two leads to optimization. So, what is optimization? That here in optimization we assume that individuals try to do the best they can. Okay. And also under given constraint, it is not that you can do anything that you want to, you have to consider the constraints. So, why do we have constraints? The typically reasons for having these constraints are scarcity. Okay. We have already discussed what does it mean. So, scarcity leads to constraint, self interest leads to this is related to self interest. And here we are talking about how they try to do, but how using reason. Okay. Let us look at it again at optimization why do we get into optimization? Why do we get to this problem that individuals try to do the best they can under given constraint? Let us look at the definition of economics once again. What do we say that what is the definition? Economics is the study of allocation resources to now let us look at it what do we have economics is the study of allocation of scarce resources to satisfy individual wants so the problem here is that individual wants are unlimited. There is no end to yours or mine's want. And how about resources? Look at resources are scarce in nature, resources are limited. Okay. So, you have limited resources and from limited resources, you want to satisfy unlimited wants. How could you do that? Of course, when you have limited resources and your wants are unlimited or infinite, the only way to do it is to figure out that which wants are 
more important than others. Okay? And then given the availability of resources, you would satisfy the wants which are which has higher priority than other wants. So, that is why you have optimization and not only optimization, we have very special kind of optimization that optimization where you need to consider constraints because of scarcity. So, from here you get constraint optimization. Okay. More on optimization little later, we will talk about optimization in detail.